Hey guys, so here bringing you another video. Now, welcome to a game of Anivia. Now, if you look at the length of the video, um, it's a doozy. So there is a reason that I'm not doing this as a live commentary or even a POV commentary, and it's because I stopped recording. And you'll see why um, during the game. It's no surprise. But yes, this is a 48-minute match of League, um, which I'm not looking forward to how my voice feels after this, I will say. <laughs> So what I might do, I might not commentate as much. We might have a... Oh, God. We might have a bit of blank air here or there just to help my throat. I am doing this while I'm live. So Nessie, a thousand plus ultra. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We've got about roughly 500 viewers in here right now, but that number's probably going to go down because I'm not actually playing anymore. But, um... Yeah, so this is an absolute doozy. Now, what I will say, I this game was played a few days ago. It was actually, I think, before my trip. That of my weekend trip. I will say the the Nasus was probably one of the worst players I've ever seen, um, and you'll see why throughout this game. Um, specifically, we will point out a couple things about his build. Now, from memory, it was a player that wasn't a Nasus player, wasn't I? Maybe not even a top plane player. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little bit frightening that these people are in the same game. You know, if anybody what it goes on Reddit and there's a subreddit called Idiots in Cars, some of the things you see on there, you're like, oh my God, we're sharing the road with people that drive like this. This is how I feel about someone like this Nasus. It's like, I'm sharing a solo queue game with this guy? Jesus Christ. Whew. But uh, yeah, he the, 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 the Nasus went 0-12-0 the game before on Volibear. Thank you for reminding me, Lolet. Um, by the way, runes, just to make sure people are aware. Electrocute. Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, uh, Relentless Hunter, and precision, uh, Presence of Mind, Coupe de Gras, and Attack Speed, Ability Power Armor. Now, some people are like Attack Speed, Huz. Yeah, so Attack Speed, um, basically, Anivia has a very slow auto attack. And it's just to help you land those extra autos. They also can help towards Electrocute as well. Getting that auto attack off to give you the, th the third damage type to, to proc the Electrocute. So, um... Yeah, I, I like it. Like, people go, you're missing out on 9 ability power. Sure, but you get plenty of ability power anyway. You get plenty of damage anyway as a Nivea. So it's it's not something that I feel like you're missing out on. You don't build any attack speed on a Nivea. So it's the only source you're getting from. Uh, we are obviously against an Akshan. Bit of an annoying champion. Hey, Mac. Um, but... Honestly, I'm not that scared of a, an action as an Nivea. To be honest, I'm not that scared of as versus an action against most of the champions I play. Maybe my champions are just good versus the champion. Um, but yeah, uh, mainly when I've played against Akshan, he doesn't really do that well in the 1v1 to me. He might get a tiny bit ahead in farm because he's got that early presence to him. But more than likely, they try to get ahead by roaming rather than trying to beat me in mid lane one on one. Uh, and obviously, that is a more typical... Um, it's a typical kind of thing for Akshan anyway, it, you know. Sometimes an Akshan can try to win. Okay, so play number one. Flash with then the stun into the tower, wall the echo, and the red buff I just saw there did unfortunately run out. But basically what happened there was using a mechanic that echo has against him. It's a mechanic that I really dislike. Uh, I've said it many times, and it's a latch mechanic. So echo has a latch built in to his E. Um, so he dashes and then when he latches onto an opponent it will follow them even if you flash so i actually use that knowledge for me that he flashed by the way and by the way unfortunately i hit an e on a cannon and i didn't hit the akshan that's really annoying um they i don't even get egg by the way zach's coming in akshan doesn't even flash gets killed and i'm alive got an assist for the akshan got the, the kill on echo for, i think that was first blood and uh yeah that was honestly really really good um but yeah, so it's using a mechanic against an Echo. What I will also say, um, you might notice throughout this game, and it was very intense playing this game throughout, is I think that play partially tilted this Echo. <laughs> Maybe unsurprisingly, because that was a really bad play by him um, and a good play by me. This Echo had it in for me the whole game. Uh, you'll see throughout, but yeah, he really wanted me this whole match. And he was like an Echo one trick. His name is literally Toxic Echo, so... Yeah. Hey, almighty. Um, what I would say, though, because of how long this commentary is, if anybody in Twitch specifically has any questions about this match, the champions in the match that you want me to kind of go over, feel free to throw some of the, the, them in chat. 
Obviously, the champion I know most about is Anivia at the moment in this game. But if anybody has any type of questions, throw them and maybe periodically we'll, we'll answer a question here or there if nothing ma major is happening. And obviously, because this is going to be basically a 50-minute video, feel free to pause it, go get yourself a drink, maybe even some popcorn, and enjoy. So, I hit level 6, which is always nice. Land my Q with the damage and... Get the cannon. Hell yeah, Huzzy cannon. Zack's on a killing spree. Echo dead again. And yes, Echo has bought a dark seal. Uh, have I been following LCS games? No. Um, the only the only pro play that I've actually been watching recently is pro play through double lift. Um, his, um, meanwhile, watch this play. So a Akshan, I don't know what he's doing. Get the kill there. Nice little solo kill. Weird. I don't even know if I'd say outplaying the Akshan. He just played that bad. Uh, Big Boy Burke, thank you much for the seven months of Prime. Thank you so much, dude. Um, so yeah, we got another solo kill on Akshan in the early game. Unfortunately, you might have noticed as well, the Nasus got killed. Uh, Echo trying to gank me. Um, he is two levels behind, so... Um, Willy Wonka says you've ordered a Subway wrap for this. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> All right. Gonna just stay in lane. Like, don't need to base, by the way, if I don't feel like I have to go back. Like, gold-wise, I've got only 700. So, it's not nothing major I need. Zach's on a rampage. Again, I have said to people quite a lot already, if you're a jungler and you're not playing Zach, if it's your playstyle, if, if Zach does suit your playstyle, I think it's a mistake not playing that champion. He's really overpowered right now. Akshan showing a little bit of desperation, honestly. So desperate to get his passive. And the weird thing, see these little wings above the level of... Um... And again, look how desperate this Echo is. This You're literally watching Tilt right in front of you, everybody. Killing spree for me. But yeah, that Akshan goes for that play, and he's got the little wings. The little wings, and that was a bad death. Gives Akshan a free kill for no reason. That was an Akshan ult, by the way, and nobody blocked it. Uh, the little wings mean Zach's got his passive up, his revive passive. Um, same with me, Anivia, I've got my egg. So it's very weird to kind of go for that all-in play when that happened. Now, this was a bit tilting for me. I've absolutely wrecked this Akshan early. One, he gets a free kill on Lulu because nobody blocked Lulu ult. Secondly, my Jinx had no health. She decides to overstay, and all Akshan did was stay stealth the whole time and then get another kill. Little bit tilting when you've made your lane opponent go 0-2 early on and then your your teammates decide to give him two free kills little bit tilting uh why is zach strong right now so zach has always been a strong uh solo queue champion he's very strong at ganking uh from any position so it's very hard to you know ward against him or react against him especially in a solo queue setting that you don't have good communication with your teammates plus riot gave him a really obnoxious buff that he didn't need his ap scaling is absolutely ridiculous um, and I, yeah, I don't know why they did it, um, which is a bit weird, but yeah, uh, did I know Bjergsen's back in the LCS? I did, but I always generally, I, whenever Bjergsen does his typical thing of playing like a support mid lane, I always never watch the game because I have no interest and he plays like zillion mid and all that stuff. I just find that incredibly boring. Um, and he's very good at, of, good at it, obviously. Um, but it's just not what I enjoy with league, to be honest. It is cool to see him back playing, though. I will say that, because obviously he was a coach for many years and then gone back to being a player and straight away, I think, from what I've seen, um, is doing pretty well. Just show you don't really lose it. And again, no, I don't mind Zillion. I just don't like Zillion mid. Zillion bot lane, sure. In current meta, anti-burst, you revive your AD carry that just got one shot. Fantastic. That's why the new champion... She's a very modern League of Legends champion because because of how many one shots there are in the game. Her W is going to give a zombie revive mechanic to a AD carry that can constantly get one shot. Like we are, by the way, just to make the point clear, with that new champion. I know it's not about this game, but that new champion, we are going to see fights that that champion probably revives the AD carry two to three times during a team fight, depending the cooldown of it. Just to make that point. All right, so fight top lane. Going to try and get there to save the, the Zac. Unfortunately, I don't get there in time. Um, and I do go for a flash, obviously, to try and make a play happen. Um, Akshan is walking away, and I am going to go down. What is quite funny, by the way, you can see this uh, four people top lane. But that was a, a very cocky Aatrox that is, like, dancing or whatever. Uh, annoyingly, again, not really any major punish well the punishment for lux roaming like that is we get dragon which is a punishment of sorts it's good but 
yeah, it's a bit weird to see four people at the top lane around the 10 minute mark, but modern day league. Um, but yeah. Comp-wise, just to explain comps, by the way, I don't know why Nasus is walking mid. If you guys haven't noticed, by the way, yes, he's got 33 farm to the 78 of Aatrox. Like I said earlier, he is one of the worst players I've seen in a very long time. Um, and that does include the starts to unranked to diamonds. <laughs> like, genuinely. This, this, by the way, if you're wondering, um, obviously with it being a replay, uh, we were one, one win of, of this game. We're one win away from diamond three. So, obviously, this was still in January. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to go over here. My wall was sick. Really good wall into a shutdown. Really nice. I, very, I was very happy about that. I remember that. So, big shutdown for me. I get a red buff, which, you know, is much of a muchness. I don't, you know, don't need a red buff, but it's always not a bad thing. The red buff for uh, an Anivia, obviously auto attack with a red buff. But the th good, good thing is, is the unit recovers health when not fighting champions or epic monsters. The health regen is actually really nice. So, you can get just back to full health after getting a kill. Uh, meanwhile, because Lux again, over roaming question mark. She's not in bot lane now for quite a while. Echo going bot lane. Uh, the Tristana isn't being too punished about it normally when a support is not actually supporting uh normally that ad carry would struggle farming but the tristana is actually a tiny bit ahead of my jinx which is a little bit weird um has to be said um one thing just to make the point clear also about top lane if the nasa's randomly found this video and just wants a little bit of advice or you see yourself in this position the logic that this this Nasus had, it's why, again, we looked at his history. He went 0-12-0 on the game before this one. He did the exact same things two times in a row, game after game. That he went, me and Akshan engaging on me, kind of a bait though, um, into, I muck up my Q annoyingly. Big burst, and I do manage to get the Lux, which is nice. Thankfully, I actually get the kill first, because that means Akshan doesn't revive the Lux straight away. And Echo is now mid lane also. I'm probably going to use Rift Herald. Um, but yeah, so he built, he rushed a Divine Sunderer when he's losing the match. Why rush a damage item when you're playing a Nasus or a Scaling Champion when you're already losing terribly and that's only going to make you potentially squishier and easier to kill? Get a tank item early and then build t uh, damage if, if that's the way to do it. It's just very weird logic. Well, there's, there's no logic in it and that is why the Nasus is half farm at 13 minutes. Anyway, we do lose, unfortunately, mid-tower. Rift Herald being used in mid, annoyingly. But it is what it is. Um, and unfortunately for us, again, it's literally... This why this game was so frustrating is we had the Nasus in top lane. That was awful. And then we had this bot lane that the Lux was out-roaming the Lulu. Obviously, Nasus is dead again. But the Lux was out-roaming the Lulu. And the Tristana was still constantly ahead in farm. And not just that... The first time practically that the, the Lulu roams, the Jinx overstays and dies. So it's just very like, oh my god, everything is kind of going a bit bad. Which obviously, when you're in the match, is quite frustrating. <laughs> especially, I will say, especially, I have put, and I've had to deal with it even today. We've played a bunch of solo queue today. I'm not going to give away how today's gone. I really need to... So I will say one thing, and I'm going to say this in this video and also to the live audience. I need to do a lot better when it comes to, like, chilling out a little bit. Um, because the views on the YouTube channel are really good right now. The, the, we're, we're getting 500 viewers on Twitch at the moment per stream. Content-wise, we're doing fantastic. And the only thing that's kind of going bad is my own pressure with myself that we're not climbing... Or I, I want to, like, climb even faster. And we're actually doing well. We've got a 60-odd 60 60 percent win rate in the rating that we're currently in. I do need, I think, calm down a little bit. It's going really well, so that is one thing I actively want to try and do moving forward in the next couple of weeks is relax a little bit, um, and I'll try my best. I will. Anyway, items, just to mention, um, some people obviously have their mythics at the moment. So, Gore Drinker top lane, uh, Shield Bow Akshan, Kraken Slayer Tristana, and then three of us on our team. We have a Sunfire, Leandres, and Kraken. So both teams have three so far complete. It's just obviously there's a jungle difference at the moment and obviously a very big top lane difference. Uh, so they are trying to dive him or we're trying to dive him. Zach's trying to recover the fight if he can. Doesn't look likely though. I am maybe looking to roam. Not sure how this is going to go though. And it's just not. Um, 
Lux potentially, or sorry, Lulu getting a little bit caught out, but she will be fine overall. And that was Akshan ult. Gonna try and go for another Akshan play here. Get the wall off. Stand right next to him, by the way. How to make, or how to be more consistent with your Qs. Kind of like a Blitzcrank hook. Meanwhile, yes, that's an Aatrox that teleported over. Really good flash by myself, if I do say so myself. B big wall keeping him in my um, ult. I don't even die yet, by the way. I get the kill on Aatrox. Playing really well. Uh, Varakaz, thank you so much, dude, for continuing your gifted sub. Thank you so much. And that was a really nice play. Hey, the carrot. So I, I, we survive against the fed Aatrox. Flash perfectly, otherwise my egg would have been popped and I think I was a sitting duck at that point. Echo, again, this is a tilted Echo. He doesn't go for the dragon at all. He goes for me initially. I've got egg form, which he can see. And now, yep, you've guessed it. He doesn't even kill the Lulu. <laughs> This, oh man, like, that was one thing that I will say was making me laugh throughout this game. Uh, the carrot, five months of prime. Huzzy cheer, huzzy cheer, huzzy cheer. Oh my god, dude. Varakaz with 10 gifty subbies. You'll hear the, the sound any second, I'd imagine. I do have a Zonya second, by the way. There you go. Thank you so much, dude. Why are we at like eight to eight? Oh, why are we at like basically 1,850 subs? It's literally, well, now it's February. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand, guys. What the hell? Ah! Thank you. It doesn't make any sense. Jesus. Um, I went as on your second, by the way, uh, for, for a couple reasons. One, Aatrox is fed on the enemy team, and he's an AD champion. Two, Echo is an assassin that even though he's 0-4, he can probably still one-shot me. So anti-one-shot item is on yours. Three, Akshan is directly against me, AD champion, and obviously there's a Trist. Yes, that was, by the way, a Zac soloing their Tristana. She didn't use any sums, maybe she just accepted the death, but yeah. Uh, I am, a, you know, I will say you can see my confidence at the moment in the game. How can you tell that I'm playing confident? I'm walking in the enemy jungle without a care in the world. That is confidence. Meanwhile, Echo, mid lane again. Lulu, unfortunately, weirdly, watch this, bam, she's one shot. Echo walked, sorry, Lulu walked into the stun. Now, a bit of a tip for Anivia players. Watch how I walk back towards my ultimate. Don't walk away from your ult. That's my safe area. That's where I want the fight to be. So I'm not going to walk away and walk towards an Akshan when I don't need to. Walk. If he wanted to finish me off, he needs to walk towards my control area, my ult. So yeah. Uh, Echo, by the way, on the ropes. Uh, unfortunately, also, Nasus dies again. And yes, as you saw here, he has rushed the Divine Sunderer. And that again, that is why he is so far behind. Is because, one, he's probably just generally kind of a bad player. You know, I have to say it. Uh, but two, he's probably also tilted. Again, the game before this, like I've mentioned, he went 0-12-0, doing the exact same thing. He did a Divine Sunderer rush Volley Bear with no... No tank items at all. And, you know, by the point that you're 0 and 5, maybe you'd buy some tank items. Literally not a single tank item on the game previous. So it's just probably a tilted mindset. Not thinking logically. And probably a bit of rage uh, involved in that as well. Again, if you do have a game that you're going like 0, 12, 0, have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Not sponsored, but it can help. You know, that little bit of chocolate, it's nice. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, so anyway. Returning the mid lane, and because I'm so far ahead, by the way, I normally I normally wouldn't want to do this. I hate buying Morella Nomicon on a mage. Mor Morella Nomicon is not a great carry item. You know, it's, it's a kind of cheapy item, but a lot of the value in it is um, the anti-heal. So... It's not like a pure carry item. But because I'm so far ahead, I think I can actually go for it this game. The reason being, Aatrox, obviously, he's going to be a problem. Uh, the action actually heals also, um, and so do the, as does the Trist. Now, unfortunately for me, I misplay a tiny bit. And even though it's a 0-4 Echo, if you misplay a tiny bit by a 0-4 Echo, you're still, you're still in trouble. Uh, Meg says, got enough free time to watch your streams now since you tested positive. Oh, sorry to hear that. Again, hopefully you recover nice and quick and just stay cozy and home. Have a blanket. Watch some good stuff. If you've got a single player game that you just haven't played, play the single player game. Uh, yeah, Twitter, KitKat did actually send me, uh, KitKat sent me a package last year. I, I still have the box. When a company like that sends me something, I don't actually like to chuck anything away. 
Um, Nasus is probably dead. Lulu doing her best to try and save her. Again, the Lulu, I will say, a little bit of an MVP this game. She actually was really good. Zack gets the kill down there, though. Aatrox is a problem. Zack doing his best to try and help, but positioning, a bit of a mistake's going on. Zack nearly dead, doesn't die. I'm in the area, though. Get a nice wall. With that Sterix, though. Jinx, though, doing a bit of damage in the area. We get one kill. Akshan, he's pretty weak at this point of the game. He didn't snowball or anything, and yeah. Unfortunately for us, the Tilted Echo uh, decides he's not going to go join the fight. He's just going to use Rift Herald, and that's what he does. Uh, buggy out the Rift Herald, Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, he does end up getting the Tier 2 mid. So he has used both Rift Heralds in mid lane. Meanwhile, Lux was down there. Found the Echo, by the way. Uh, he's going to do his best. Zach, bit weirdness going on. Uh, Echo, right on me. I was like, hello, I didn't expect that. I have Egg, auto attack, dead. So again, he's trying to do everything by himself, this Echo, which he shouldn't be doing. <laughs> like, he should be working with his team. It just seems that everything the Echo's doing is everything is like, I'm doing it by myself or nothing. It's like, hmm, I'm not sure about that one. Has anybody been playing Pokemon Legends Arceus? I've played about half an hour of it. I've heard some very good things. Um, I do want to play more of it, and maybe later today I might put a bit of time into it. Again, for those that are wondering why am I doing this, by the way, while I'm streaming. So one, it's a it's a 50-minute game, so I'll be a bit lonely if I do a commentary in that time by myself, I kind of feel. And two, I have to do it now because of me recording this. I don't know when this video is coming out. It actually might be tomorrow or the day after. We have the patch coming, uh, and basically whenever there's a new patch, previous patch replays, you cannot open anymore. Um, so I, I have to do this today, because tomorrow I will not be able to open this replay. So, yeah, that's why I'm doing it now, and I'm hanging with the plebs, and it might be a bit of a relaxed commentary. I will say this game will get spicier later, uh, believe me. Again, just reminding everyone, we're not even halfway through the match. Literally. We are nearly halfway through the match. It's a 48-minute game, so in just over a minute, we'll be halfway through the match. <laughs> um, it probably... I, I will say, it would not surprise me if this is probably my longest game we have this whole season. It would not shock me. Enemy team, we're just checking that they're not doing um, thingy. I do misposition a little bit here. I do have Zonyas, so we're getting the Echo baited in. Zack's jumping in over the top. I do flash. Echo in trouble, though. Out of position. He goes down. Zack going as much as he can all in on Akshan. He's not dead yet. I get unfortunate wall not close enough, but the actual fight itself's gone quite well. I can't get over enough. Zack will survive, though, and I can't chase the Akshan. But momentum is key, and yes, we are winning this fight. Unfortunately, though, Lux mispositions, but it doesn't matter by the look of it. She's doing enough damage to out DPS the damage. Sure. Um, there are mixed pings at the moment. I nearly get that action. Zach, I think, was pinging to do Baron. The problem is, I was actually... I do remember being on stream going, no, Baron's the wrong call. We won't do Baron. He pings us away, which arguably, we could have probably broken that tower. He pings us away and then realizes we can't do Baron, so then we don't. So kind of annoying that... Um, Zach pinged us away there, but, you know, not every call can be absolutely perfect. But, yeah. I do end up completing Morello early, by the way. Just thought I may as well. I'm pretty damn far ahead. I'm 937 gold-wise. 11.3k gold versus 8.3. I'm literally 3,000 gold. You know, I've got the distance up here. I am more ahead of the Akshan than the actual team gap right now. It's just, obviously, the Nasus has got a big gap also. Um... But yeah. Wait, how is that so close? Wait, what? So he's really far behind. But then my Zach's ahead. I'm ahead by a lot. Trista uh, sorry, Jinx is ahead of the Trist. Bot lane's behind a bit. But like, how is the gold lead only like 2,000 or less? Where's the enemy team gaining all that gold? I'm so confused. I don't know. It's a 2.5k difference in top. I know, but like, still... I've got like a two, three thousand gold difference in mid by myself. I don't know. Anyway, um, we are, I think, I think at this stage of the game, semi thinking about Baron, by the way. It's always a good thing to do. Uh, Echo trying to push mid lane. Just going to walk there with my wave clear, which is always nice. Her math is Huzzy Pled, potentially. The good thing I will say, with having obviously a really bad Nasus like this, we are giving him time to scale. 
Um, so, yeah. There's n all I would say is this NASA so far in this game has been incredibly lucky to have a team that's actually doing well for him. Because if you're playing terrible on NASA's and your team plays badly, it's game over. It will take too long to get back into the game. Meanwhile, Akshan, I have no idea why he did that. Akshan just completely got caught, mispositioned, and he's dead. Now that's going to open up the chance for Baron. A blue buff for Nivea with Leandres. It's going to burn very, very fast. What we should be having here, and unfortunately I get Lux queued. We should be having, and just to make the point clear, let's pause it. Nasus has got teleport up. Just to make that point clear. Right now, of this happening... He should be teleporting to Baron. Like, there is no if, buts, or maybes. I know you're a Nasus and they, for some reason, have it in their mind only split push. No. Like, Nasus, you're actually not terrible in teamfights, believe, believe it or not. Especially, like, of something like an Echo or an Aatrox that actually has to be on top of people in a teamfight to do anything. That means Nasus can do things too. But anyway, let's watch the fight. Na Aatrox out surviving everybody with the crazy healing of Gore Drinker. Echo returning to the fight, trying his best, and then I, unfortunately, have a Tristana that now is from the left. So, even though this game is relatively stompy, and we should be winning this game quite easily, that fight started with an action getting stomped, because the old Nasus McGee down here refused to teleport, he unfortunately lost us that fight. You know, we have an outnumbered potential team fight, and he doesn't give any chance of outnumbering them. So, unfortunately, we are going to lose that now the weird thing also is the nasus right now should be running to dragon if he can you know he's mucked up didn't teleport over there i'm gonna run there do the dragon for my team he's basing so yeah it was unfortunately a series of unfortunate events as one would say um but you know when a nasus has played this badly and he's got a terrible build uh maybe again expecting anything is a bit too hopeful so that will give the enemy team, I think, a one dragon. Um, Jinx Rocket, unfortunately, doesn't get it. But that will give the enemy team their first dragon of the game. But anyway, still, again, at this point, you're still kind of thinking, eh, you know, that's unfortunate. They got Baron. They got the first dragon. But we still have plenty of strength this game. Well, if you actually look at the top, everybody, because of the differences here or there... Look at the gold. The enemy team officially is actually ahead by a couple hundred gold. You would never guess that. You like in, in any degree, you would never guess that they're actually ahead at this point. They are. And, it, you know, what's the actual gold leads in champions now? So 12.7, 9.3, huge difference in top lane. Uh, Echo is starting to slowly catch the, um, the Zac. And also the Akshan is slowly gaining on me too. What is good here, though really sick pick so when the enemy team is barren getting a pick like that is massive because it completely you know in theory ruins momentum for the enemy team their echo cannot now you know he's he's dead um you know they can't push forward with their assassin and we're back in the driving seat as it were so i was very happy with that pick to land the stun there and you know just to make the point clear also even though the echo is one and seven He's actually very strong. Look at the farm. He's got 186 farm. It's actually a very high farm game. I knew Aatrox was there, by the way. Unfortunately, I just missed my cue. Really good wall, but it just doesn't matter. A Aatrox is so ridiculously tanky with his healing. Um, and this, by the way, is the thing that Riot is looking to fix. Um, of this patch, they are actually updating it. Um, so it will, it will affect champs like Aatrox. That they've had a bit too much free time. I get the Lux kill there, by the way. They don't get the Zac, which is good. I've got my ultimate up to stop the enemy team moving forward. Unfortunately, I then get echoed um, with Tristana being in tow as well. So, again, enemy team is definitely pulling this game back. I don't know why Zac did that. Um, again, the NASA is, is literally not doing anything at this point. Like, his Q's not doing anything. So, we just got aced. So, again, pretty stressful. You know, when you're thinking that this game is going to be a pretty free win... <laughs> Um, yes, we've got the differences that are happening, but we've got a strong Jinx. We've got a really strong Anivia. Our Zach's really strong. You are kind of thinking, like, how the hell is this game a loss? Or, like, potentially a loss? Well, momentum. Momentum is key. And objectives. So Jinx is doing her best to try and kite, but unfortunately, again, I don't know why she was walking so forward. She does get a kill, but she's going to trade. Not really worth it. 
Um, and they're going to get their inhibitor or first inhibitor of the game will go to blue team. Gold lead has been extended for blue team, by the way. Um, which is a bit unfortunate. <laughs> uh, nearly level 16 for me, though. Level 16, obviously a power spike for pretty much every champion in the game. Your level 3 ultimate, always a good thing. And especially for Anivia, that's so much of your actual raw damage in a team fight. And, you know, a lot of team fights are happening this game. Is your ultimate. It's very good to get level 16. Obviously, there are some certain champions that are, like, the absolute ultimate champions for, like, level 16. Cassidy and Kale, both of those kind of come to mind more than any other champion. But, uh, and Nivea still don't sleep on level 16. It, it is still very, very good. Um, so, yeah. Um, you will notice, by the way, the Zach has a demonic. Some people might be like, Huz, do you mind that? I don't actually mind that, um, because I know... Some people, when um, I had a Shen build that against me, I was laughing about it. I think it's terrible on Shen. Like, he's not really an AP damage dealer. And I think that buying Demonic hurts you way too much in the 1v1 than it, than it helps. Um, but for Zac, I actually think it's a very good item on Zac if you're having a good game. I don't think it's worth buying if you're having a bad game. But like this Zac, he's doing very well. It's giving him everything he needs. And more than anything else... Riot, like I mentioned earlier about Zack, they gave him a absolute broken scaling AP of his W, um, and it's ridiculous. Like, his damage is absolutely ridiculous combined with it, and it's still, like, a tanky item, so it's pretty good. Unfortunately, Jinx down here gets traded with an Akshan. That is not worth it for us in any stretch of the imagination. Jinx is a late-game hyper carry. Akshan is not. Meanwhile, Echo trying to go for a engage. I do wall over here so they can't go for all of it. Unfortunately, Zack getting caught out. Trist is just escaping. Putting my wall down to try and stop the enemy team moving forward. Really good. Uh, sorry, my ult down. Put a wall there so the enemy team can't move forward. And now we're keeping the uh, Aatrox in my wall quite nicely. But we're not ending up getting the kill. But this is good momentum. Uh, yes, we have lost our AD carry, but it's not bad. Unfortunately, that was so close of being good, by the way. The wall was so close. You can break a wall. I don't actually know how that didn't hit, by the way. That was an unfortunate Zonyas that I had to do. So I am going to take some damage. Zack engaging, but he doesn't have anything. Uh, Nasus gets one shot by an Echo. Going to go for an Aatrox. Um, sorry, a an Echo myself. But now the fed Aatrox is on me. And this is just where the game, unfortunately, is just falling apart. For us to win this game, we need the Jinx not to trade with an Akshan, definitely. Um, but we need the Nasus to get tanky to be a distraction for an Echo or for a Latrist. But alas, that's not happening. Um, yeah, I will look how much damage the Zac is dealing with W in a second when he spawns. I can't look it up right now. So you might be thinking, oh god, the game is over. They're going to probably try and end right now. From memory, the Jinx actually does something quite smart. So they do need minions, arguably, to end this game. Because these do these towers do do a lot of damage. Jinx is getting rid of the minions. So like they might kill one tower. They might even try to kill both. But we're spawning very soon. But what the Jinx is doing, it actually makes... It actually makes the enemy team not have the constant momentum of then having minions push into the game as well. So it's actually... It's not a bad thing. I would The only thing I would say is I think she did one too many waves. I don't think she needed to do the second wave because by that point, the enemy team was already leaving. Um, and now, alas, every single place that the Jinx walks is warded. I don't know why they have a control ward on their own blue. Another control ward is just placed and now a fight ensues. Uh, but she got Tristanid and she's dead. And now Baron has spawned. So again, it's like bad thing after bad thing. If the Jinx only did one wave, then kind of get out of there and base, it wouldn't have been bad. But she did one too many waves, to be honest. Alright, so Baron is now up. I don't know why these two are kind of just chilling near the Echo Death. Uh, we are potentially thinking about a uh, steal. But the Baron is already already dead. Um, and yeah, this game, obviously quite annoying. Gonna go for the Lux, but she had um, whatever that hell the item is that makes you take no damage. Doing the best we can here. Enemy team very low, but they're just too tanky at this point. I'm doing some okay things, but Tristana over the wall, nice and safe, and Akshan gets a revive. So again, you might be thinking, oh, Huz, the game is over. Just reminding everybody, this is a 48-minute game. 
Now, I was a bit confused that the enemy team didn't just run down mid and end, by the way. Um, they didn't, uh, to be honest. So, I don't know why they didn't, but they didn't. Uh, Akshan tried his best to get the inhib, but that's just not going to happen. And now, really bad by Akshan, potentially. He's Lulu on top of the Jinx. Few more autos here or there with a big rocket. He flashed, by the way, and he's dead. That, again is really bad. What does that do? Well, in a situation that you've now got momentum, unfortunately Trisana does get a nice inhib there because my Jinx ran to go get that guy. But because you rather... Um, yeah, you, he played that way, the enemy team has now got a number deficit and they can't actually use the Baron or even the Super Minions for at least 30 seconds. The game itself, yeah, is a 6,000 gold difference right now. Actually, a 7,000 gold difference, technically. Um, so... Pretty bad lead for... Oh, bad... Oh, yeah. Thank you. I will check. So, Zach's, by the way. So, there you go. Ah, bleh. Oi. All right. So, Zach body erupts, dealing 95 plus 12.7 max health magic damage to nearby enemies. That's a lot of damage. Like, he's got how much? 3.4k health. That is a lot of damage for a three-second cooldown. That, uh... Oof. <laughs> It's just, it's just not needed on the, a tank champion like that. It's just not. But he's got it. All right, so the game has slowed down a little bit, which I like because the game has been a little bit crazy recently. So I like the game just to slow down. I don't know why he's doing that. Enemy team looking a bit desperate to try and, you know, get a pick on my Jinx, but they do manage to survive, which is good. Lulu did have to, have to flash, though, unfortunately. Um, it's Zach's health, I'm pretty sure. Is it Zach's or is it his? I can't remember. All right, so I, I do, it does feel like the enemy team doesn't know exactly what to do. I'm pressing the wrong button. Why is that? Hello? There you go. Um, the enemy team just feels a little bit lost at the moment. I think they might now be waiting for Dragon. So the next Dragon, if we get it, it's Dragon Soul. If they get it, they're still one Dragon behind. Like, they'll even up the Dragons. Is it enemy HP? Okay, that, that's still a lot of damage. Weirdly, and I do not know why, again, weird things happened in this game, by the way. He randomly walked all the way here by himself without any vision and just died for free. Not sure why. I don't know. Some people are saying it's enemy HP. Some people are saying it's Zax HP. I think it's Zax personally, but sure. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, if it's Zax own, he's doing basically 400 damage per time he can use it with it being on a three second cooldown. It's crazy damage for a tank. Alright, so I get Lux queued. I Zonya's the Echo E, so he can't latch to me. They will break the Inhib, and Echo is trying to break... Uh, Aatrox, sorry, is trying to break open the base. So, again, this is looking pretty damn grim. Um, trust me, as you can see, there's a reason why I stopped recording this game. is because a little while ago, when everything started to turn, I got a little bit tilted, obviously, and uh, thought the game was over. Anyway, big fight breaking out. Uh, we do get one kill. I get the shutdown on the Aatrox. That's good. Tristana waiting in the sides. We do get the Wither on her, though, which is not bad. Zack flying in. Gets a big knock-up. Jinx Rocket over the top. Lovely Bouncy Bounce by Zack. With then the damage over the top. There's some kills. Jinx with the DPS over the top. Zack jumping preemptively to get that kill. <coughs> My throat is dying. <coughs> and we do end up winning the fight. Holy Jesus. And that, by the way, if we get that Dragon... Which, in theory, we should get right now. We actually will get Dragon Soul. Alright, so there you go. According to League of Legends site, it's enemy max HP. Okay. Enemy max HP. I mean, that's still an obscene amount of damage for a tank. Like, it's just nuts. Absolutely nuts. But anyway, we get Dragon Soul, and that does make quite a big difference. Because the one thing I will say, the enemy team doesn't really, apart from Echo, have a one-shot comp. Aatrox doesn't one-shot you. He kind of kills you over time. And he's got a very tanky build. Um, the, the Akshan doesn't really one-shot you. Tristana doesn't really one-shot you. So having this Dragon Soul, Ocean Dragon Soul, is so good against a comp that does sustain the kind of DPS damage rather than burst damage. Because if you don't get bursted, you survive it because they don't have burst. You walk away a little bit, you'll regen to full health. And it's like, well, I can fight again. Um, it's really good. Obviously, Ocean Soul doesn't do anything if you just get one shot and you're dead. It's like, well, the regen doesn't really count because I'm dead. So, yeah. 
Anyway, uh, nearly breaking the 40 minute mark of the game. So we're in the final basically eight minutes of the match. Can go either way at this point. Um, the enemy team is still ahead in gold, but that, that gap was 6,000. It's now 3,000. Uh, you'll notice I'm letting other people farm because I am full built. Um, I am completely full build. The only thing that I think I did decide is I would sell my Morella Nomicon for a death cap if I get enough gold to do that. Now, Baron is spawning, which we don't obviously want the enemy team to have. That would be maybe a disaster with all the inhibitors. They're in that bush trying to do like a play, getting me off to the side. Uh, they're still in that bush, by the way. I don't know why Akshan was just waiting in that bush the whole time. Zach, however, makes quite a big mistake himself. And he never goes for the Baron, never looks for it, and has taken too much free damage. So, we have to back away. Obviously, it goes without saying, we do have Ocean Soul. So, there will be regening going on. You can see the Zac is already full health. <laughs> but, I think at this point, because of the super minions in our base, we do decide we're going to give the enemy team the Baron. Now, it is unfortunate to do that. When the enemy team has already got so many minions flooding into our base, to then give the Baron buff to those minions... Yeah, it's not good, obviously. Um, I didn't really want that to happen in any regard. Um, when it comes to, by the way, levels, everybody is level 18 in the game. Meanwhile, I get a sick, really big Q, but we don't use it, unfortunately. There's nobody to maximize off that stun. Um, but yeah, everybody is level 18, apart from the Akshan, Lux, um, Lulu, and Zack. I'm a little bit surprised that the Zack isn't level 18 by now. Uh, Echo, again, really trying to kill me. I have to flash, unfortunately, against him. Zach, I don't know why. He goes for a solo play. And then, yes, I got Echoed. Uh, my team decided to go all in for the Aatrox. The one good thing, it has to be said, if I was a normal mage there and they killed me and then they could move on to the next target really quickly, they could have potentially even ended the game. But because I'm a Nivea, I actually delayed them a lot even though I died. Like, I delayed the end pretty much just just for being a Nivea. Like, that wasn't any skill or anything, but just my champion alone was like, oh, you guys can't end. Uh, meanwhile, I don't know why Nasus is doing that, but he, I think, will survive. Akshan flashes. Again, this Akshan didn't play very well, but we survive. We survive another push by the enemy team. Just me and Zack died, which is okay, I guess. The Jinx is obviously coming into our own. Jinx is a late game hyper carry, combining especially with a Lulu that's just going to hug to her and buff her up all the time. Jinx is probably one of the best champions in the game at the moment. Now, big trade happening. Jinx will survive. NASA's going to go for it. Unfortunately, Rocket misses. Again, you can see how squishy that guy is. And again, a terrible death because what does that do? Well, the long death timers that the enemy team had, Akshan gets the revive on two of the enemy team and suddenly the whole enemy team are now alive and our NASA is now dead for 50 seconds. <laughs> oh, this game was an absolute war, I'm telling you. Like, oh my god. So, farm-wise, again, nearly at 300 farm. My farm has very much slowed down because, again, I don't really want to actively farm. Like, some of my team are not at full build right now. So why would I take the farm when NASA still needs full build? Um, Lulu still needs full build. Like, the Lulu should really be farming, to be honest. Um, Akshan might be doing another big mistake, by the way, and he is. So, both teams have got mistake peoples quite a lot. Adoldish Gambino, 29 months. It's time to feed enemy Yi to use him against his own allies. Oh, and the new champion. Yep, for sure. Uh, Nasus, we can't check his stacks. We'll have to wait till he's revived. But yeah, so we have the Nasus that does weird things every now and then. Hell, even the Zac did a weird thing earlier in bot lane. But the enemy team, definitely lovely wall, if I do say so myself. I managed to get the Aatrox ult, and that's huge. For the next big team fight, he will not have it. Unfortunately, at the same time, the Zac gets caught, and now we don't have a Zac. Uh, we are in potential trouble here, you know, goes without saying. I have that, that Echo, by the way, is stuck. He's literally stuck with my wall. It was a perfect wall, but we can't use it. Um, Dragon is spawning soon. Aatrox going for me. Do a bit of damage. Always nice. Unfortunately, he jumps over my wall. Jinx Rocket doesn't hit, unfortunately. Land a big stun on Lux. Gen can't use it. Nasus has got 816 stacks, which is pretty good. All right, so big play potentially coming up. Managed to get a lovely wall on the Aatrox. He's going to go down. Really good there. Lovely play. We've obviously... We're back to full health with um, the Dragon. 
um, the Dragon Soul, and now Rift thingy. I managed to. Uh, that's my blue ward. I noticed that they were well, predicted they'd be in there, and they were. And now, oh, here we go. Echo again in his desperation. He's going for me. He uses his ult, by the way. Really bad timing. And now we're going to loop around. I actually jump, by the way, into the pit. Um, Zach is not here at the moment, but here we go. I know Echo's here. I'm going to go for it. I muck up, by the way. That's a mistake that I made. Uh, but we get... No, we don't. We don't get the Dragon Soul. Enemy team gets the Dragon Soul. You can't make this game up, can you? Going to go then for the Akshan. I'm waiting, being patient. Going to ignite him. I am just going to keep him in my ultimate. But the Jinx... With the combining CC of the Zac, we managed to hold out them, even though the enemy team got the Elder Dragon. So they've got the Executes right now. So the enemy team have got Elder, we've got Dragon Soul, and both AD carries are sticking around. So this is very risky. Um, I am went. I decided to go back. Lovely Ws, by the way. Unfortunately for the Jinx, she has an Aatrox teleporting, and she doesn't quite get the kill. So again, bad death, arguably, by her. What was that? Three auto attacks? Four auto attacks for Trissana to be back full health? Jesus Christ. So again, the game presses on. No one is ending yet. <laughs> it's a crazy game. <laughs> oh! So trust me, when I finished playing this game, I needed to lie down. Um, trust me, like, it, was, it was absolutely insane. And yeah, what Meg is saying is actually true. What, what really helped us this game is how good our wave clear is. My Anivia wave clear, Jinx's AoE wave clear with Runin's rockets. We could hold the enemy team out so much. And obviously what didn't help the enemy team is that their action did has fallen off by now. Um, he is not strong in this game. The, the best thing he can do is probably getting like an assist on a revive. That is what Akshan can offer his team right now. His actual, oh god, his actual carry potential is very minor. Okay, so Baron is spawning very soon. And the game, you know, I've mentioned it a few times. The game is nearly coming to an end. Here we go. Watch this. Echo in his desperation goes for me. Does I go for the stun. Nothing as yet. Continue. But that does show Echo's mindset. I want to kill this Anivia. We are a little bit split. I don't mind taking that damage because within a few seconds with our Dragon Soul, I will be revived up. Baron has spawned. It has been started. Here we go. Echo, eing over. Echo, flashing, eing on me. I zonyas. He zonyas. Mines. I spawn. Enemy team have got Baron. Disaster. Echo dies. I'm in egg with Lulu ultimate. Fight continues. Enemy team has Baron. We now walk mid lane as five. The Echo is dead. So that Echo legit basically wanted me dead so much. He traded. Well, he didn't even trade. I have egg up. He can see that I've got egg up. I'm also surrounded by my team. He kills himself basically for not doing anything. The enemy team do have Baron, though. Enemy, Zack getting engaged. Lux being caught out. Ultimate coming over the top. Lux is dead. Momentum now swinging in red team's favor, our team. And now we're breaking over the inhib. Do not stop. Keep moving forward. My wall was bad. We're flashing over. I land the Q. That's better than the wall that I did. Jinx gets the kill. Trist mispositioning. Gets withered. Jinx lands the W. Tr GA gone down. And here we go, everybody. So, end of the game. Jinx does the DPS. That is the game. So, we literally won this game. And I'm not kidding. We were probably going to lose this game. The enemy team had that Baron. They had everything. We lost that. We won that game because the Echo was so desperate to kill me. Like, crazy. Like, if the Echo just played that smart, went over, got the Baron, we, we were never going to get to the Baron in time. The enemy definitely had that Baron killed. Kill the Baron and then take the fight together as a team. Echo went by himself to kill me. It was nuts. So yeah, there we go. And yes, this game, by the way, got us into Diamond 3. So really nice game uh, into Diamond 3 before the end of January, by the way. Um, so my goal was just to get Diamond be before January. So Diamond 4, we did more than that. We actually got Diamond 3. So really good. So that game was an absolute war. If you made it to the end, should we do a little fun thing? If you made it to the end, use the comment. Have somewhere in your comment time. 
because Echo, being a time champion, kind of lost his team the game. So use time somewhere in your comment, and I'll know you made it to right into the end of the video. 48 minutes long. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Goodbye. regime